Successful tinnitus relief, what makes the difference? Hello again, and thank you for watching our next video. In this video, we are going to share with you the secret behind successful tinnitus relief. As science tells us, the limbic system supports many different functions, including emotion, behavior, motivation, long-term memory, and others. This is also a part of the brain that can make a drastic difference in how our tinnitus is and how it behaves. That's why, as we try to understand the true nature of tinnitus and why it behaves in certain ways, it's essential to know the role and significance of the limbic system. Now, what is this tinnitus and brain connection all about? So, what is tinnitus doing to our brains? First of all, it makes them tired. Tinnitus is nothing else but abnormally high levels of activity in the same parts of the brain. This is also why there is no cure for tinnitus. The only way to successfully remove tinnitus from our life is to remove the connection between tinnitus as a process and our awareness. Many individuals, even those with a very low presence of tinnitus, often complain about experiencing short-term memory difficulties. Again, the easiest way to think about this problem is this lack of spare brain processing power and the brain of the tinnitus sufferer is so busy with this abnormal activity caused by the tinnitus presence that in effect some other brain functions are not as well taken care of as they should be. Discussing brain functions related to tinnitus is an activity which can take hours and hours. Connecting the rest of our body to tinnitus through the autonomic nervous system is another story which can also take hours of discussions. What we are going to do instead is to make some videos about very specific problems and connections between tinnitus presence and the brain. The key to reducing problems related to chronic tinnitus and eventually finding relief from tinnitus is having a good understanding of what tinnitus actually is. Our brain works with a stream of nerve signals perceived as signs of tinnitus presence. This video can change your life by helping you understand the true nature of your enemy, tinnitus. We used to talk about tinnitus having many different parts and being a condition triggered not only by the various factors, but also influenced by certain preconditions. Some of these preconditions are well known, while others are still being studied as we learn more about the processes in our nervous system, particularly within our brains. With all the advancements in computer-assisted imaging techniques like MRI, and especially when exploring functional MRI for studying our brain, it becomes evident that modern neuroscience is just scratching the surface. There is still much more to be learned beyond what's universally accepted. However, some neural pathway development processes are well understood due to their importance. Some of these insights may apply to understanding the chronic tinnitus processes within our brain pathways, rather than being only related to our ears, neck, or other locations. It's essential to clarify that we are focusing on chronic, long-term tinnitus, which is the condition that causes many problems we discussed in some of our previous videos. So though there is no chance for tinnitus caused by earwax plugging the ear canal and tinnitus caused, for example, by a traumatic brain injury to be identical and follow the same extended process and at the end resulting in the same long-term symptoms, however, the typical issue associated with tinnitus remains consistent and we refer to the noise in our ears or head as the most common and easily recognizable tinnitus symptom that people usually talk about when they discuss tinnitus symptoms. In the very important and considered to be one of the most significant research summary report article titled Tinnitus and Underlying Brain Mechanisms, we can read as follow, and I quote, Tinnitus, which often results from an insult to the peripheral auditory system, is associated with changes in the structure and function of many brain regions. These include multiple levels of the auditory system as well as the regions of the limbic system associated with memory and emotions. Given the broad extent of brain regions affected, it is unlikely that there will be a single drug or treatment modality that can effectively reduce or eliminate tinnitus. 
A multidisciplinary approach to the management of tinnitus patients is clearly needed. End of quote. So as we can hear, chronic long-term and even temporary tinnitus is known to cause some changes in how our brain is and works. There are many research papers which cover this subject, and many theories show up from time to time in some professional scientific magazines and journals. Still, it's important to note that Professor Pavel Yastrubov's tinnitus retraining therapy, based on implementing the neurophysiological model of tinnitus, is becoming widely accepted and more popular since its first publication in scientific journals and so-called white papers. We take pride in our association with Professor Yastrubov, and based on our research and many years of experience in using TRT in our treatments and therapies, we are staunch supporters who can attest to the exceptional value of his research and work. When you look at the screen and see a picture showing some parts of the brain which can be easily recognized, and based on Professor Pavel Yastrubov's neurophysiological model of tinnitus, are known to be involved in the chronic tinnitus condition or even temporary tinnitus. As we can see in the picture, the central part or element represents Professor Yastrubov's tinnitus model. It is called the limbic system. This part of the brain takes a very active role in presenting tinnitus symptoms to our conscious awareness. It's clearly shown in our pictures due to its significance and its role in the proper functioning of our brain, which sometimes leads to it being referred to as a separate brain. The limbic system is often recognized as the most important part of our brain involved in producing tinnitus symptoms, strength and awareness changes, especially when we discuss severe or catastrophic levels of chronic tinnitus. Once again, as a reminder, when discussing severe or catastrophic levels of tinnitus, we refer to the Tinnitus Handicap Inventory Scale, otherwise known as THI. I encourage you to watch some of our videos where we explain the THI and why it is so significant when discussing tinnitus conditions. As science tells us, the limbic system supports many different functions, including emotion, behavior, motivation, long-term memory, and others. This part of the brain plays a crucial role in various brain functions, especially those related to our basic survival instincts and the fight-or-flight response. As we mentioned earlier, this is also a part of the brain that can make a drastic difference in how our tinnitus is and how it behaves. That's why, as we try to understand the true nature of tinnitus and why it behaves in certain ways, it's essential to know the role and significance of the limbic system. It influences whether we are aware or unaware of the presence of tinnitus, which can range from being extremely annoying and loud to less noticeable, and at the end making it challenging for us to pinpoint. What makes the difference is this understanding that the brain's limbic system is responsible for most emotional processing. Individuals with an anxiety disorder are known to have abnormally high activity levels in these areas. Now, please remember that most tinnitus sufferers experience high levels of stress and anxiety caused by tinnitus presence. On the other hand, any additional source of anxiety or stress present in our lives is known to have a dramatic effect on the awareness and strength of tinnitus-related symptoms by increasing what we could call a basic level of the limbic system activity to a much higher level. So what that means for us is that not only stress and anxiety are known to be responsible for 75% of tinnitus onset, but in fact, it's a combination of what we could call a based load of stress, which we can experience in our life daily in addition to stress and anxiety caused by a tinnitus presence this mix can be very devastating to the tinnitus sufferer. This is why scientific research tells us that anxiety and tinnitus are linked to many conditions. People with tinnitus often live lives filled with high levels of stress and anxiety, affecting them on a daily basis. Constant tinnitus by itself, which is nothing but this abnormal activity in some parts of the brain, can disturb in many ways an individual's life and cause difficulty sleeping and focusing, 
but it can also trigger worsening episodes of anxiety and depression, as some other factors can even greatly increase this abnormal activity. So to have this good understanding of the chronic tinnitus condition, we need to remember that our actions can make all the difference. Our attitude toward tinnitus and emotional response can be as negative as expected, or we can try to learn to be calm and more relaxed by understanding the nature of tinnitus. We are not trying to tell you this would be nice and easy to do. There are many tools modern psychology has at its disposal, including widely recommended cognitive behavioral therapy. This is why our clinic has a registered psychologist and psychotherapist working with our tinnitus patients. Also, we are using elements or some of the 12 different therapies proven to be effective and relevant to ensure the success of the tinnitus treatments, especially when we have to work with some other problems, such as chronic anxiety. Based on our current understanding of tinnitus and over 15 years of experience working with thousands of patients, we are convinced that the psychological part of the treatment often referred to as CBT, is a must element of successful tinnitus therapy. Our patients undergo training and education on how and why they should engage in the expected practices to succeed in working with their minds. We have many patients whom we refer to as distant patients coming from various locations in Canada and the US especially when local professional tinnitus treatment clinics are not accessible to them. We strive to do our best to share all the required knowledge and expertise so that they can benefit from our therapies as our local patients in Ontario. Please do remember to leave a comment sharing what topics you'd like us to cover in our videos. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a like if you find value in our content. Thank you for tuning in.